Hey there, Sabre friends. I'm really excited to show you one of my favorite kinds of lightsaber. This one is a Star Killer from the Force Unleashed video game. Um, I've seen a bunch of Star Killers. Uh, I really like a lot of them. Um, this one's probably uh, one of the best ones I've seen. This is by Patrick at Cargill Custom Sabers on Facebook. And my friend Tim uh, got in touch with Cargo Custom Sabers to build him this Star Killer, and then he sent it to me, and we put the uh, Plector Labs Prism 5.1 into this lightsaber. Really difficult installation. I had a lot of trouble with it. I tried to go the extra mile with this one, put some extra neo pixels, kind of all throughout the hilt. Um, the problem I ran into uh, was um, corrected for me by Irv over at Plector Labs who gave me the great advice to, since I was putting so many um, accent LEDs that were NeoPixels in the lightsaber, to add a few more resistors. And not only that, but to put the resistors closer to where the accent LEDs or the blade LEDs would be. Um, so that's just kind of a tip for anyone that wants to put um, NeoPixel accent LEDs um, throughout your hilt. Um, it might be a good idea to add a second resistor. Uh, in this case I have three resistors. I just have a couple different places where there's accent LEDs that are NeoPixel. Before they were kind of data they were bugging out with the data. Okay, so um, even though in the manual it says you have to put the uh, resistor as close to the blade as possible, um, when building this, I, I kind of had to learn as I went and learned that, the, um, that for accent LEDs uh, with the NeoPixel, you will need to add some more resistors. Um, so I learned the hard way and how to rebuild this one maybe uh, three or four times and unfortunately being a star killer with an open section um, in the middle and a beautiful crystal chamber uh, this one took about five days to install into so every time I made a major error I had to go back um, and most of the time I think every time out of a four installations I went back to the first step um, it's kind of forced to go back to the first step um, the way I did the installation there so uh, each time was like it was like you know five days um, of trying to correct it and then sometimes running into a different issue um, just because of the difficult installation for me um, on this one but you know it's a beautiful lightsaber I started building this one um, over 40 days ago probably um, it's just been kind of a, um, a lot of a lot of hours trying to make this work and then when I started it didn't have available at the custom saber shop was they didn't have those uh, new connectors um, that they have now for the NeoPixel so what I, what I did was um, at, as you can see the you know the Starkiller design is this open window and normally I would say that the NeoPixel's not really, or the string blade's not really that great for when you have a window, because you need a little space um, before the light starts. Um, with the new connectors from the Custom Saber Shop, they're very slim line, and you can get away with more and more um, reduced depths of your emitter, and you know even th maybe thin necks and things like that. So with this one, what I did. Well, I still use my 8-pin connector from the days of the string blades and really nice audio connector. I, I actually like the way it looks. Now, what I did was I used some blade stock and added some NeoPixel accent LEDs um, so that this, was, this is going to act like a blade plug now. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And now, before I go to that, what, what I did do as well was install um, some 5mm white LEDs inside the emitter. 
Um, and I have the kind of the lights on right now, but I think you can see what I'm talking about. So when you power on the saber, Tim's going to get these white um, light that uh, is also visible on the trans white blade tube stock that I use to make the um, the emitter plug. And also the crystal chamber is just going to light up in white as well. Um, that's another five millimeter LED in there. My idea for that is that the crystal chamber also has a NeoPixel LED. And when you turn that on, it's going to give the impression of that white core. The NeoPixel LED is going to light up that crystal chamber in purple or whatever color uh, that NeoPixel can do. I have some NeoPixel accents in the control box. And like I was telling you before, I have the same NeoPixel um, LEDs like are in the blade. They're also as a built-in blade plug right there. So that's pretty cool. Um, so even though there's no blade in it, you can still play around with it. You can change the colors. So we're into like a red. Gold. Yellow. And green. And the crystal chamber will glow in in white plus whatever color is selected. And I have a switch built in up top here. So what, what you can do is you can just easily turn that off. Because what you may want to do is um, what Cargill Custom Sabers did here for Tim was he put a really nice interior in this. So to get to your charge port or your rice port or your SD card or to see some accent LEDs that I put in here or the the brass um, the brass um, body of, of this that's underneath. This is what you do. So you have to take that grub screw out and then we're just going to pull this apart straight off, right? Um, really nice. I think this is like a steel outer section. Look at that nice pommel. Um, so this piece comes off and you have the body of the Star Killer, um, the top part of it connected to this bottom part. Um, now the speaker is down there. I've actually got that on there with um, there's just some some uh, special acrylic tape that I put just for friction there. Because when you when you open that up, you have access to the board um, but you really don't need to go into that all that much because you have the rice port which is right there so that's a cable that you put in to change the different effects that's a real-time interface and they have the 1.3 millimeter recharge port right there which you don't really need a kill key because we have the switch up here Okay, so it focuses on that switch. Hmm. It's not really focusing on that, but um, the cool thing about the chassis here is that there's these uh, holes here, which I, I put some accent LEDs. Um, so, if you just want it on display and stuff like that, there's this um, RGB accent LED which is um, just blinking right now but that's RGB so that could go from like red to um, different colors uh, kind of cycle through them and it's got some green accent LEDs and it's got some blue ones like two blue two green an RGB some different stuff going on there 
So I thought that was pretty cool. So the saber operates without the bottom part, um, but um, you know if you're gonna play around with it and stuff like that, um, this the speaker chamber is only kind of locked in with the bottom part on. So I'm just gonna show you how that goes back in. You just have to align the screw hole. See, there's three screw holes here. Um, that are holding in the brass chassis and um, the uppermost screw hole, the center one, is the one you're lining up here. There's like a little bit of friction at the end there. Never push anything too hard. But um, let me get the little grub screw back. I'm going to Get that in there. I'm going to show you guys um, with the with the blade in. So, this is the blade I made. It is a trans white tube with a bullet tip, a drilled out tip, extra deep. Um, for the LED, the Neopix LEDs to sit up there. Okay, just like the bottom, the emitter part of the Star Killer, we needed something special with the blade because of that window in the Star Killer. So what I did was I um, measured very purposefully there and um, cut the blade to perfectly meet that plastic blade stock that I have in his in uh, Tim's emitter for um, a really nice smooth connection that looks great and is lit from both the emitter and the blade. So let me show you what I'm what I'm talking about. There's um, about 250 um, LEDs in this blade, and they're all controlled by computer chips uh, through the Prism by Plector Labs, and you'll see uh, really cool, really cool effects. So you just kind of have to align. Um, it goes in really easy, but just align that. And what what also I have here, I'll show you. So what I what I did here too was um, I have a this is this is actually the blade retention screw. So it has a hole through the blade retention screw for the light to come through. Um, we have the uh, the blade that meets the uh, bottom piece that's also lit up. Really cool blade effects. The uh, sound uh, that Tim wanted on this, we have Rogue as the first font. We have Flourish as the second font. Two to Menace. Two to Menace as the third font. The Plector Labs Prism will hold six. The Prism B5 that we currently have. So, really nice blade here. The red color looks great. We have Revenge, number four. Super fast ignition on this one. Um, another red blade, obviously, because it's Darth Maul style. And you got the whitish red crystal, like I told you. You got the NeoPixel accent in the um, in the uh, control box, two watt bass speaker. This 
This is number five, Hero, one of my favorites. Um, Mad Cow is the author of a lot of these fonts. I'm not sure about Tuta Menace. Um, I'm not sure who, who made Tuta Menace. These were the ones that are requested by, by Tim. So for Hero, I just have you know, like the Luke Skywalker style song going. Uh, we can get our saber to a good Luke Skywalker green. There we go. And fates. Ooh, nice blue. This is a really even blade. The trans white works out really nicely, you guys, like um, for the NeoPixel, really nicely. Okay, so that's about it. Um, this is like one of my favorite builds. I love the Star Killer lightsaber. Um, first time implementing this type of switch. I'm really happy about that. Um, great job that Cargill Custom Sabers made with this uh, Star Killer. It was tough to do, but I'm not a you know I'm not afraid of something that's hard to do. Um, but uh, it certainly took some time, kind of pushed a bunch of my projects uh, out. I think I was trying to get this done for Halloween and then for something else and then for the opening of the movie, The Last Jedi. And then look what happened. We are almost at Christmas time and now uh, this has kind of pushed things around a little bit. Um, so. I have a bunch of other sabers I'm working on as well. So hopefully you guys will see some more stuff uh, rather quickly. This one was difficult, but some other ones hopefully won't be. So I hope you like this. I love the Star Killer lightsaber.